Things are looking up. That's what we're talking about tonight as we get into the Word. Well, it's good to have you back with us on this Wednesday night Bible study. And I sure hope these uh, studies have been a blessing to you and encouragement. I want to uh, encourage you to get your Bibles now and turn to Genesis 41. We're going to be in Genesis 41 tonight as we continue the life of Joseph. And uh, while you're opening your Bibles there, uh, let me remind you that we plan to have another drive-in Sunday this uh, Sunday at 1030 again. And we hope you'll join us. We had a great time this past week. And the Lord really blessed and just enjoyed the fellowship, just getting to see one another. And uh, now if you're, if you're not healthy, if you're sick, please by all means stay at home. And we will upload the service online later and you'll be able to watch that. And we understand that. But if you're healthy, if you're able, please come and be with us. Now please, we do ask that you stay in your vehicles. That, that's just uh, something we need you to do. That would be a big help. Uh, but if you'll come, and man, we'll have a great time. And we sing together and fellowship and just have a good time. And uh, that, that'll be a blessing. Also, don't forget get our homecoming May 17th coming up brother Brent Carr is going to be with us he'll be preaching and we're excited about that they'll be singing and then on May the 31st is our spiritual warfare conference and we're looking forward to that Dr. Jerry Scheidbach will be with us on that Sunday through Wednesday night and you said preacher are we going to be in the building by then I don't know I pray we will be I hope we will be but I plan to have it either way uh, we'll either be in the building, uh, outside, drive in, or online, uh, one of the three. But I plan on having it uh, regardless, Lord willing, because we, we need this. And so you'll be praying about that, okay? Well, get your Bibles now, and let's look at Genesis chapter number 41. And we'll begin reading in verse number uh, 38. Genesis 41, and verse number 38. The Bible says, And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this? a man in whom the Spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Wow. Uh, so far in our study, we've seen Joseph has had a pretty rough time. Uh, maybe maybe Joseph even wondered if things would ever get better. Uh, up till now, we all kind of wondered that. But then we get to chapter 41, and as my title of tonight's lesson is, Things Are Looking Up. The dark days are disappearing for Joseph. And um, tonight we're going to see how God took Joseph from the prison and he put him in the palace. We're going to see how Joseph went from fetters to favor. Now, King Pharaoh had asked Joseph to interpret his dreams for him. He was troubled, and he needed an interpretation. And so Joseph gave him an interpretation. Well, would Pharaoh believe Joseph's interpretation? Well, he does. He believes Joseph, and he acts quickly to follow Joseph's word. Whatever Joseph said, he acts to obey that. And uh, well, I thought about would, would that everyone would obey God's word that quickly. Wouldn't that be a blessing? So by him obeying God's word, it spared him a famine and it spared him death. And by the way, obeying God will, will spare you a lot of heartache, won't it? Just doing what God says uh, would stop so much of the heartache that we bring upon ourselves. So up until now, Joseph had endured burdens, but now we're going to see he's about to start enjoying blessings. You see, listen, hang on during the burden time. Don't give up when things are rough. Don't give in when things get dark and gloomy um, because the blessing time is going to come. God's still going to bless you, and the blessings will come if you'll remain faithful. So tonight, I just want to take a few minutes and, and give you six blessings that I see in the passage that we just read, six blessings that Joseph received when Pharaoh promoted him. Things are looking up. Joseph's been promoted now, 
And with that promotion, six blessings that Joseph received when Pharaoh promoted him. The first thing we see is that Joseph got a new ring. He got a new ring. Look at verse number 42. The Bible says, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. Now, this was not just any ring. This wasn't a, uh, just a wedding ring like I have on or you may have on. This was what was called the king's signet ring. And uh, this had his, uh, his, his image or his logo on there or whatever that symbolized him and his power. And you know, back in those days when they would send letters or special documents, they would seal them, they'd fold them over and put wax on there on the seal. And then they would take the signet ring and they would press it down into that wax. And that let anybody who uh, come in contact with that letter know that was from the king. They better not mess with that. Uh, and it was a very important document. So it represented authority. So here we find that Joseph, just by getting the ring now, has been given favor and authority from the king. And can I say this? Our king will also give you what you need. Here, Pharaoh, give him the ring he needed to, to have the authority to do what he needed to do. And our God does the same thing for us, doesn't he? You know what Jesus told the, the, the disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8? He said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses uh, unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. And so Jesus said, he said, here's what I'm going to do. I want to send you out as witnesses, but I'm going to give you the resource you need, and that is I'm going to give you power. You're going to receive power uh, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so God gives the ring of authority when we go in his name. We have the authority to go in his name. And so we find that Joseph got a new ring. Number two, Joseph got a new robe. Joseph got a new robe. Look at verse 42 again. It says that Pharaoh arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Now that word vestures means robes. He gave him robes of fine linen. Now, isn't that interesting? The word robes is plural. Not just one robe. Pharaoh gave him multiple robes. Isn't that interesting? Remember, he lost, uh, he lost a coat that was special to him earlier. He lost a coat, but now he's gained a wardrobe. God gave him back far more than he ever lost. Now, what's interesting, too, is it wasn't just any kind of robe. This was robes of fine linen. It means the most elegant linen in all of Egypt. I mean, these were high dollar uh, robes that he got. Now, why? Pharaoh wanted Joseph to be dressed to reflect his position. I mean, here he was. He was next to the king. He was, he was high up. And so Pharaoh uh, wanted him to look the part. He wanted him to look uh, the dignitary that he was. Now, the truth is, we, even today, we expect a dignitary to dress like a dignitary, don't we? We expect a farmer to look like a farmer. We expect a football player to dress like a football player. We expect a nurse to dress like a nurse. But if you suggest that a Christian dress like a Christian, oh, man, all of a sudden you're legalistic. Now you're, you're, you're going too far. But, uh, but Pharaoh wanted him to look the part of the dignitary that he really was. Now, it's interesting when we're talking about the robes. Joseph had a pretty bad history with robes when you think about it, didn't he? He actually had had two robes taken from him. You say, uh, when did that happen? Well, he lost the first coat or the first robe uh, that he had of many colors that his father gave him. He lost that one. His brothers took it from him. The second coat or robe that he lost was when he was fleeing Potiphar's wife. Remember, the Bible says that he left his coat with her in her hands and he fled. Now, Joseph lost both of those uh, robes by doing right. Can I tell you this? It's always right to do right, but sometimes doing right will, will cost you something. Uh, sometimes doing right comes at a price. You might lose some things at first, but with God, you'll always get more than you lost. God will always bless you for doing right. So what is the third thing that Joseph got? Well, the third thing we find is that Joseph got a new rank. He got a new rank. Look at verse 42 again. It says, and put a gold chain about his neck. The ring gave Joseph authority. The chain was a symbol of the authority. In other words, the, the ring let Joseph know that he had power. 
uh, the chain let everyone else know that Joseph had power. It's almost sort of like uh, nowadays in the military when you see the, 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 the bars or the, or the, the, the uh, stripes on, on military uniforms. You know, if you see a, a person with maybe just one little stripe, one little pin, uh, you know they're, they're, they're probably low on the totem pole. You see a general or someone like that, you've got these stars and multiple bars. You've got the pins all over their chest and all that. You know they're, they're high up. They're very powerful. Well, Joseph was promoted to third ruler in the land, and so this, uh, this chain symbolized this rank. He got a new rank. It also dictated his conduct. In other words, now Joseph needed to act like, like his position. He, he needed to act uh, like his rank. You see, the truth is a lot of people want the chain of power, but they don't want the conduct that has to come with it, do they? Uh, they, they want the power but they don't want the responsibility that comes with it. They want to call themselves a Christian without living like a Christian. And uh, now this wasn't the only time that a chain reflected Joseph's rank in life. This wasn't the only time it regulated his walk. What do you mean? Well, he had just come from prison, which, what did he do there? He wore a chain, didn't he? Now, the chain he wore there wasn't around his neck. It was around his feet. He was chained down. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a gold chain, it was an iron chain. And so the gold chain that he's receiving now, God is replacing that iron chain with a gold chain. And, and it shows that he went from being a lowly prisoner to a lofty prince. Oh, well, that reminds us of the change that happens when a sinner gets saved. You know, sin uh, at one point enslaved us and, and put us in the prison of condemnation, but salvation gives us a new position. It gives us the gold chain of, of, of salvation. Praise God for that. That represents the fact that we're free now. We're no longer in bondage. Now, what's the lesson for us in this? Our walk should reflect our rank. Joseph had to live according to his rank, and you and I ought to live according to our rank as well. Somebody said it this way. They said, the Christian's conduct should reflect the refinement, responsibility, and rank of the gold chain, not the crudeness, corruption, and condemnation of an iron chain. Let me ask you this. Which chain are you wearing tonight? Are you still wearing the prison chain, or are you wearing the palace chain? Something to think about. So we find that Joseph, he got a new ring, he got a new robe, and he got a new rank. But there's a fourth thing that Joseph got. Number four, Joseph got a new ride. <laughs> he got a new ride. Well, I remember the first car I got, mm, it was old, and uh, it, you know, it had some scratches on it, and the interior wasn't the best, and all, I got it from a mechanic, and it ran really well. Uh, it wasn't the nicest car, but boy, it was my car. It was a new ride to me. I was excited. Well, Joseph got a new ride. The Bible says, and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. Well, think about that. Uh, you know, they, they call the presidential limo the beast. You know, it's such a big, bulky car, and, and uh, it's just a, an awesome uh, a car that they built to, to protect the president in. They call it the beast. I, I know of a pastor, an independent Baptist pastor, by the way, in, in another state who, uh, just through the way the circumstances were, uh, came from his friends with the governor, and, and when uh, the president was coming through, going to do a rally in his state, uh, he actually got this pastor, invited the pastor to ride with his governor and the president in the presidential limo all the way to the uh, to the rally. And that had to be something. Could you imagine just sitting in that limousine? It's just you and the, and the governor and the president. Imagine the conversation that must have took place. Well, what an honor that must have been. Well, Joseph, he got to ride in the second chariot. Well, oh, what an honor. I mean, he's right behind King Pharaoh going down through there. And so what we find is Joseph had faithfully honored God. So now God was honoring Joseph. Now, what's really interesting, too, is how you see uh, that uh, it says that everyone before them cried, bow the knee, bow the knee before Joseph came in his chariot. Do you know that's the same message that we ought to proclaim about Jesus Christ? Oh, yeah. Philippians 2.10 says that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Joseph got a new ride. Then number five, we see Joseph got a new reputation. He got a new reputation. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, Pharaoh gave Joseph a new name. Look at verse 45. 
And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Paneah. Now, like every politician, Pharaoh, he wanted to make sure that this new appointee of his named Joseph uh, had a good reputation among the people. Now, you got to remember, Joseph just came out of prison, right? And that wouldn't be a good reputation. So what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh gave him a new name that would solve that. Now, this, this is a long name, uh, Zaphnath Paneah, uh, but it means salvation of the world. Oh, my goodness, what a great name. Pharaoh gave this to him salvation of the world well what a what a foreshadow of god was going to use joseph to save the world you say how do you mean save the world he used joseph to save egypt from famine he saved the world people would have died had it not been for god working through joseph and can i say this uh, just like pharaoh gave joseph a new name at salvation god gave you a new name too didn't he Oh, isn't that great? And we ought to lead others to the Savior of the world. We can't save the world, but we can lead, uh, lead others to the Savior of the world. Let me give you the sixth thing really quick before I finish that, uh, that Joseph received. The sixth blessing is Joseph got a new romance. He got a new romance. Look at verse number 45, the last part. It says, And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. Now, get this. This is interesting. Notice that she was a daughter of Potiphera. Who does that sound like? Potiphar sounds really close to Potiphar, doesn't it? Potiphar and Potiphar. Here's the difference, and there's a big difference between the two. The difference is, had Joseph taken Potiphar's wife, it would have been a great wickedness. But it was okay for him to take the daughter of Potiphar. Now, here's the spiritual significance for us. Uh, The the, the similarity between Potiphar and Potiphar kind of gives us a little indication about the deceptiveness of sin. Sin can look like righteousness. Potiphar looks a little bit like Potiphar, but it's a big difference spiritually. So you have to look closely to discern the difference between Potiphar and Potiphar. But thankfully, Joseph had that discernment, didn't he? He had that discernment. Uh, See, lack of discernment is what often messes us up. And so every day you ought to pray for discernment. God, give me the discernment to know the difference between Potiphar and Potiphar in this world. To notice the difference because sometimes sin is presented in a good light, a favorable light. But you must have discernment to realize it's still sin. And so what's, what's interesting, what I want to end with tonight is this. God gave Joseph back everything that he lost and more. Now you think about this, Joseph's wife, Asenath, bore him two sons. She bore him two sons. Who were they? Well, the first one was, was called Manasseh. Now, what does Manasseh mean? The name Manasseh means forgetting. Oh, man, God's blessings were so great now on Joseph's life that he was forgetting all that past sorrow and suffering he went through. You, you mothers, you know what it was like when you gave birth and you went through a childbirth and the pain of childbirth. Yet the moment you held that baby in your arms, all the pain, it was just a faint memory, wasn't it? Well, God is blessing Joseph. Things are looking up. And now he has a son named Manasseh reminding him that the former trials and all the things he went through in the past, they're just going to be a distant memory. But there's a second, a second son that, that he had, and his name was Ephraim. And Ephraim means fruitfulness. God is making Joseph fruitful despite his afflictions. Listen, I know you're going through a lot right now. We're all going through a lot of trials right now with this pandemic. But just be faithful. Just be faithful. God is going to reward your faithfulness. And uh, he will reward you with fruitfulness. Uh, You know, God may allow us to be fruitful in the pandemic. Amen. What a blessing to get to witness to someone and and share the gospel with them and maybe see them saved. What a blessing that'd be. But even just the fruit of having peace and joy in your heart, even while the world around you is falling apart. So just keep on being faithful. Stay with the stuff. Uh, Things are going to be looking up soon. All right. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Uh, Now, don't forget, we will have our services on Sunday at 1030. And I sure hope you'll come. I sure hope you'll be there. Uh, We look forward to seeing you. Be praying now for the service that God might be glorified in everything. We'll see you then. Lord bless you.